It looks like. Oh, I can see the next slide as well. Yeah. Let me see. I'm trying to think. Let's see. Hide presenter view. Now everybody sees. Well, that's weird. Of your options, this might be better. It froze up there. Direct. I know. I shouldn't have tried to do too many new things at one time. Resume slideshow. Hmm. Whoa, that's not going to work, is it, Matthew? No. What's, oh, I get it. No notes? No, that won't work. See, he's selling display settings. Duplicate slideshow. There. How's that look, Matthew? That's part three. Dang it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a minor detail. All right. Ah, how's that? I'm liking it. Okay. Ah. <laughs> okay. So I kind of told you, y'all familiar with the whole pH, acid, base sort of thing, and that's exactly what we're going into. And we're just going to add to what you already know, so it should be great. So you're used to pH, and the H in pH meets the hydrogen ion concentration. So this is so cool. So actually, not just pH, but I've got something called pOH and pKA. And they, what they have in common is the P before the pH, the P before the pOH, and the P before the pKA all means you're going to apply the P function. The p-function is basically you take the log of that value times minus 1. So, and I was thinking about this today, was just trying to explain it, and it's almost, you know how we're used to reading from left to right, right? To me, you almost have to go from right back to left again. So basically, you start here, you have the hydrogen ion concentration, you, you find the log key on your calculator, take the log of that, and then apply a minus 1. That's it. So it's, like I said, kind of from right back to left again. How do you get the pOH? You have the hydroxide ion concentration. You find your log key, and you take it, take it times minus 1. Those Ka's, those ionization constants for weak acids that we talked about earlier, okay, how do you get the pKa? You find your log key, take the log base 10 of your Ka times minus 1. That's it. Okay, so pH is actually, there's an analogous pOH, there's an analogous p anything. Okay. So another thing with acids and bases is we need to talk about this thing called auto-ionization of water. Is that not cool or what? That's what this is. What does it mean? It means water breaks apart. Okay. And so when you're drinking your cup of water, water molecules to a certain extent are in equilibrium with their broken apart version. Is that not cool or what? And we know that we can take any equilibrium, because that's an equilibrium, and we can write an equilibrium constant expression, where we put the products raised to their stoichiometric coefficients in the numerator, divided by the reactant, in this case, raised to a stoichiometric coefficient in the denominator. Water does not appear. Is that not cool or what? So we have a constant called Kw, and it's talking about the auto-ionization of water. Okay, Kw, it's the molar concentration of the hydrogen ion times molar concentration of the hydroxide ion. Okay, each raised to the first power. Now, here's a number. There's been a few numbers in Gen Chem 1 that I needed you to memorize. I don't think Chem 2 we've done too many new constants to memorize. But this is a constant you want to memorize. The K, and it does depend upon temperature because remember the um, equilibrium constants, they, they are for a specific temperature. So for 25 degrees Celsius, the auto-ionization of water, the Kw of water, is 1.008 times 10 to the negative 14th. Okay, now um, sometimes you'll see that um, with three sig figs, 
it's 1.01 times 10 to the negative 14th. With two sig figs, it's 1.0 times 10 to the oops, negative 14th. Okay? We buy that, so memorize that. Um, all right, KW, auto-ionization of water. So here's the cool thing. If you take the square root of 1.008 times 10 to the negative 14th, you will get 1.0 times 10 to the negative 7th. Okay, so in other words, I, I hope this makes sense. It's hard to explain, but if you take this squared, you get that. Okay. And the cool thing, and you guys probably already know this intuitively, if you have a, you know, just some water and it's minding its own business and it's what we call neutral, guess what? The hydrogen, the H plus, and the hydroxide ion, OH minus, they are equal. And they are present in a molar concentration of 1.0, two sig figs, times 10 to the negative seventh molar, moles per liter. Is that not cool or what? I guess it's just me. Okay, but... Before I move on, um, one of the things I want you to, to figure then is if something's acidic, check this out. If something's acidic, it's got its H pluses are more than usual, guess what? Your OH minuses are less. And by golly, for that one solution, if it's at 25 degrees Celsius, if you take that molar concentration times that molar concentration, it better be equal to your KW. That's it. Okay? So as one goes up, the other has to go down because their product is constant. All right. Um, so, uh, auto ionization of water. Um, I'll go ahead and show you this little video. Is that all this little video is? Okay. So, we said that actually, instead of a proton running around, a loose loon, you know, H, plus, usually it connects up with another water molecule and forms the hydronium cation, H3O. Plus. Okay. H, plus, H3O, plus, same thing. Okay. So, this actually is kind of what I showed you before. So let's see, this should play famous last words. So auto ionization of water. In this case, forming the hydronium cation instead of the hydrogen cation. All right. So what that video would have shown you is basically a pair of water molecules, okay? One being a proton donor, one being the proton acceptor. So I hope you're kind of seeing how actually this one over here on the left is going to kick off a hydrogen, so it's acting as the acid, okay? This water molecule, the second water molecule is acting as the base. It's going to accept the hydrogen or the proton, okay? So that's the auto-ionization of water, okay? Okay, so back to some kind of hard and fast rules. KW is talking about the auto-ionization of water. And at 25 degrees Celsius, it is equal to 1.008 times 10 to the negative 14th. Remember our KAs and our KCs and our KPs and our KSPs, they don't have any units, right? All right. So let's talk about applying the P function to the hydrogen ion, okay? applying the P function to the hydrogen ion. What does that mean? Like I said, you're going to insert the hydrogen ion concentration there, take the log base 10 of it times minus 1, that'll give you your pH. Your pOH is similar, but instead of the hydrogen ion, the H plus ion, uh, molar concentration, it's your hydroxide ion molar concentration. All right. Now there's these other, and you might want to put a star next to this slide. <coughs> there are these other kind of Backward things. Let's say backward things. Kind of backward things. So if instead of the hydrogen ion concentration and you wanted the pH, what if you were given the pH? So where I put the star, that's what you're given. Let's just say you're given the pH and you want to backtrack to the hydrogen ion concentration. This is how you do it. Again, it's kind of a right back to left again sort of thing as you read that. You take the pH times negative 1, and in this case, you're going to have to, on your calculators, find the 10 raised to the x key, okay? Take 10 raised to the negative pH, and I give you your hydrogen ion concentration. 
If you um, are given your, your pOH and you want to know your hydroxide ion concentration, okay, take minus 1 times your, your pOH, take 10 raised to that power, okay, and that will give you your hydroxide ion concentration. And the reason that works is um, um, it just does. They are the same relationship. So purple box, blue box. So KW for any solution, I don't care if it's a 25 degrees Celsius or whatever, your KW might change. But for a given solution of water, the molar concentration of your hydrogen ion times the molar concentration of your hydroxide ion will be equal to KW at that temperature. Another very cool thing is that for a given solution, your pH and your pOH for that same solution will add up to be equal to your pKW. So you're like, dude, how do we get to what the, K, what the pKW value is? Okay. The pKW is, um, you take the log of the KW. So here, let's do this. Take your calculators. You can play along with us at home if you want to. Take your calculators. And for me, I put the log key, and then I put 1.008, my E key, negative 14. So it is kind of a left to right thing. Did you guys get negative 13.9965? Okay. To get that, you apply the p-function to the kW. So that is equal to negative log 1.008 times 10 to the minus 14th. Does that make sense? So the fact that we got on our calculators displayed negative 13, well, let's just round it to two decimals, negative 14.00. I have to then apply my negative, and my pKW is equal to 14.00, just like this says, my pKW. Okay? We applied the P function to the KW, which is 1.008 times 10 to the minus 14. There. So, I think I have it in so many words coming up here. For the same solution, your pH plus your pOH will be equal to 14.00 at 25 degrees Celsius. That is very handy. Okay, So these two things are very helpful. Now, if you're like me, um, and I've seen these slides a few, year, few times, right? But does this throw anybody off, the whole idea that now, instead of going with uh, uh, four sig figs for the coefficient, of the um, KW, now I'm just going with two sig figs. So instead of 1.008, this is the same number. 1.0 times 10 to the minus 14th. 1.008 times 10 to the minus 14th, okay? I don't want to throw anybody off. Those are the same numbers. So this is that. Just rounded to two instead of four sig figs. All right. So let's talk acids and bases, shall we? <laughs> so if I were, and we're going to see some diagrams here in a minute, but if I was to kind of ask you guys what you knew, you'd probably say pH-wise, like this says, this is neutral, okay, set pH of 7 is neutral, right? And you guys would say acid over here uh, with lower numbers, and like 1 is very acidic, and 14 is very basic, right? And you're right, you're right as far as the pH scale goes. We're just going to build on that. And not only are we going to build on kind of what you know about pHs, a low number being acidic, a high pH being basic, but I want you to connect in with that and understand, I guess I'll superimpose on this, um, if something's acidic, it has lots of H pluses. Okay, if something's basic, guess what? 
with regard to water auto ionizing, okay, if something's basic, it, ha it has more OH minuses. And anywhere along the spectrum, at any given time, if you were to pull the hydrogen ion and the hydroxide ion, multiply them together, if it's 25 degrees Celsius, that should be equal to 1.0 times 10 to the minus 14. Isn't that cool? So we're just kind of building on what you already know. Do we dare? <laughs> The second one usually <laughs> goes faster. Oh, see? Negative 14th, and they do. It's a snapshot. Okay. And then the pOH, if you add the pH, which is 5, plus the pOH, you've got to get 14. So the pOH has got to be 9.00. See how that works? It's just so slick. Uh, pick on one up here. Okay, it looks like a pH of 13 is a pH, pOH of 1.00 because they all add, that, add up to 14.00. Um, yeah, you kind of get the idea there because you're going to have some problems coming up. I mean, not problems, but. So here actually then again, pink is um, acid, blue is, uh, or blue is base. So these are some, kind of some household things. I've been playing like quiz up for different things. Uh, and anyway... Uh, quiz up in chemistry, a lot of times they will remind you that eggs apparently are basic. So if you get to playing quiz up, that's an answer to one of them. <laughs> uh, with, a, with a pH that is greater than 7, that's basic, right? So we've been focusing on uh, 25 degrees Celsius, and I told you to commit that to memory. We can go with coefficients of 1.0 or 1.01 or 1.008, but it's all times 10 to the negative 14. Okay, so that's the Kw at 25 degrees Celsius. And you can see the, the temperature dependency on the Kw. Okay, so let's do a couple of problems. Okay, and they're fun. <laughs> um, we, for uh, both of these solutions, um, we are going to come up with everything. Basically, we're going to knock out the pH, the pOH, the hydrogen ion concentration, and the hydroxide ion concentration. There's definitely more than one way to skin this cat. Um, but the problems for part two um, and these two all deal with strong, strong acids or strong bases. Okay, That's to say that here in a minute when we focus on this guy, and actually this is my hint to working these problems, one of the first things is I would take HCl, which is one of the six strong acids, I might write AQ, uh, and show it breaking apart into H pluses with a one-way arrow, AQ, okay, and Cl minus AQ. And then I'm going to insert this molarity, the 0 0.100, underneath 0 0.10, excuse me, molar HCl. And the fact that we have a 1 to 1 to 1 across the board, that means the molarity of the hydrogen ion is 0 0.10. And we don't care about the chloride ion, but it's there. Does that make sense? So by golly, already of those four quantities, you have H+. Does that make sense? You're done, I mean, with 25% of that one. So let's go through my... Um, I think I'm just going to kind of let my slides speak for themselves. So like I said, I would literally, um, like you saw me a minute ago, I would put those concentrations underneath just to kind of get started. And then focus on this and kind of go from there. Um, so we need four pieces of information. There's, like I said, one of ours. Now, there's two approaches that um, we can go with. I'm going to knock out the pH first. Okay, so um, on your calculator, and I guess it is, like I said, you, I need to put in my log function, and then I put in 0 0.10, okay, and it will say negative 1.00, and then I apply the negative 1. Does that make sense? So the pH is a positive 1.00.
I got my calculator to work again. It just needed a button battery. I know. I almost threw away. <laughs> hmm. So did you get a negative one? Yeah. Now, one of the things, and I'll try to, I think I've mentioned this before when we dealt with logs. I'm really into rounding, and you guys would tell me that the molarity has two sig figs, right? And we show the two sig figs actually after the decimal. So actually, technically, you really do need to show 1.00 to show your two sig figs. We good with that one? Okay. Um, then if, with that done, um, we can go ahead and knock out the POH, recognizing for the same solution that added together, they're equal to 14.00. Now you might be tempted to just do that in your head and get 13.00, right? Um, but I probably would show it in some way. Okay. So the pOH for the same solution is 14.00 minus the pH, which we came up with is 1.00. So the pOH is 13.00. And, and that's, the, that's the third of four things, right? So we had the hydrogen ion concentration. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah. We had the H plus, the pH. This is the pOH. Now the last thing we need is the, um, the hydroxide ion concentration. And before I show you my, uh, the, my builds on here, let me just kind of say, remind you, the, star, the, the slide I said to put a star with, okay, it looks something like this. Right? Okay, so here's how we apply this. We're going to use this 13.00 and knock out the hydroxide ion concentration. So you need to find your 10 raised to a power key and your negative key and do that. Gosh, it's been so long since I've done these. Yep, I have a 10 raised to the X key, negative 13.00. Okay, did you get 1 times 10 to negative 13? Me too. Then don't forget, you need to show two sig figs in that. So I guess it'd be like 1.0 times 10 negative 13. Does that make sense? And then the other thing is, you know, don't forget units. This is one where we just throw units on the end, recognizing that it's a molar concentration. Any questions? They're kind of fun. All right. So the other approach would deviate like this. So we knew the hydrogen ion concentration is 0 0.10. And we know the hydroxide ion concentration multiplied that has to equal to 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14th. So we can, re we can arrange that and get the hydroxide ion concentration is equal to that 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14th divided by the H plus, which is 0 0.10. Nothing fancy on here. Of course, you can almost do that one in your head, although I get confused when I'm dividing by a number less than one. But, okay. So rounding to two sig figs, your hydroxide ion concentration is 1.0 times 10 to the negative 13th moles per liter. And then we just kind of finish that thought through. I think I go for the POH next. So the POH, remember, you've got to get your log ready. I'm going to take the log of this number times negative 1 to get the POH. So the log base 10 of 1.0 times 10 to negative 13, that was your hydroxide ion concentration, times negative 1, Log of one. Yep, I just get a negative 13. And then I have to apply my negative 1 and make a positive 13. And then I have to recognize I want two sig figs. So actually it's 13.00. Not too bad. All right. 
So let's do the next one. So like I was saying, I would um, go ahead underneath that strong base. And again, I don't think we're going to start part three. <laughs> we'll be doing get, th get through part two. But um, in, for your homework for part two, these are all strong S's and strong bases. We know that because it's got the one-way arrow. So if I write 0 0.0025 molar, do you guys see where the fact that I create two hydroxides for every barium hydroxide means that actually this one is 0 0.0050 molar? Okay, don't let that come come back to bite you. So that's actually where we're going to, our starting point to knock out the four pieces of information that we need. So that's going to be your OH minus molar concentration. So to get the pOH, the second thing, would be a good thing to go for. So we're going to take the log of the hydroxide ion concentration, which is that 0 0.0050, okay? And then take that times minus 1. And you'll get, again, two sig figs. We're showing two significant figures if we go ahead and make it 0 0.30. So you'll get like 2.3, but it's to show two sig figs, it's 2.30. I wonder, can you just take like a negative log 0.005? Yeah, you could do that in your calculator. <laughs> Instead of having to take it times minus one, that's better. Okay, so two things down, two more to go. Um, and there's two ways to skin this cat, too. If we go for the pH first, recognizing that that pOH plus pH would be equal to 14.00, if we can take 14.00 minus 2.30, which is your pOH. Um, since we're subtracting here, we need to go with decimals. So that would make your pH uh, 11.70. Seems basic, doesn't it? Like if you're like me, I'm much familiar with pH than pOH. Okay, so a low pOH is a high pH. All right. Um, so. Uh, couple more pieces of inform or just one more piece of information. Now we got to knock out the hydrogen ion concentration. So get your 10 raised to the x power ready. So we're going to take 10 raised to the negative, um, what do we have back there? Oh, duh. Sorry. 10 raised to the negative pH, yeah, 10 raised to the negative 11.7. And did you get this? Two sig figs is 2.0 times 10 to the negative 12. Again, you just have to know at this point that units at that point are going to be mole, moles per liter. Molar. And for whatever reason, I want to show the, you the other approach. Based upon that hydroxide ion concentration, we could instead turn our attention to the hydrogen ion concentration next, recognizing that the product of them and, and temperature uh, and water that's 25 degrees Celsius is equal to 1.0 times 10 negative 14. So your hydrogen ion concentration would be equal to the Kw 1.0 times 10 to the minus 14 divided by that hot hydroxide ion concentration, which was that 0 .05, 0 0.0050. So we can knock out the hydrogen ion concentration this way. If you divide that out, allowing for two sig figs, you get, again, 2.0 times 10 to the negative 12 moles per liter. And then from that point, knock out the, the pH, which we're going to apply the, the, the P function, take the log of that molar concentration. So the pH would be negative log of the hydrogen ion concentration, 2.0 times 10 to the negative 12. So just put a negative log, 2e negative 12. 
So rounding's two sig figs. I get 11.70 is your pH. So it's kind of fun. It's like it's the same solution, but all that information is the same solution. So acidic solutions are ones that you've learned before. Basically, the H pluses outweigh the OH minuses. But now hopefully you know that actually the product, though, if you multiply those molar concentrations together, that you should get Kw, which for 25 degrees Celsius is 1.0 times 10 to the minus 14. All of this other stuff can also be said about acidic solutions. Acidic solutions, it means that your hydrogen ion concentration is not only greater than your hydroxide, but it's greater than that tipping point of 1 times 10 to the minus 7. Okay. It also means that your hydroxide ion concentration is less than um, 1 times 10 to the negative 7. Okay. You, you will have a small pH if it's acidic, and you'll have a large pOH. So here is a kind of a slide to go similarly along with that. If you have a basic solution, what does that mean? It means that the tips that the tables have turned, and your hydroxide ion concentration is greater than your um, hydrogen ion concentration. Okay, and the tipping point was that um, 10 to the negative 7th moles per liter. For basic solutions, you're going to have a high pH and a low pOH. Neutral solution, the hydrogen ion and the hydroxide ion molar concentrations are equal. So all of this goes along with neutral solutions. So if it's at 25 degrees Celsius, then basically the molar concentration of your hydrogen ion and your hydroxide ion is basically the square root of your Kw, isn't it? Which is uh, 1 times 10 to the minus 7. Your pH and your pOH are both equal to 7, which added together, they've got to be equal to 14. So that's perfect. So there will be times when we talk about um, acids and acid and base chemistry, uh, buffered solutions, when they give you, um, oh, I added to this slide, didn't I? This isn't there. When they give you the uh, pKa, okay, but what you really need is the Ka. And so I kind of told you, remember how you do that. Basically, you are unpacking a p-function that's been applied to your um, Ka. So to unpack it, just like we did before, you can insert your pKa here to find out basically what your Ka is. Handy dandy. So yeah, let's take a look at these slides, the homework. Um, and But the thing is Wednesday, the reason I wanted to go to part three a little bit is because part three, if you look at it, it's not just about the assignment slides, but it's got like eight slides, assignment slide, you know, another ten slides, an assignment slide. And just make sure you eat your Wheaties that morning because <laughs> they can start to kind of run together. That's why I wanted to break it up, but that's okay. So let's look at what these look like. These are, these are kind of fun in a strange sort of way. Okay, so for, you can see basically there you have A, B, C, D, okay, so you have basically uh, four different salts. These are all strong acids or strong bases, so a one-way arrow, and we're switching gears on Wednesday, we'll be talking about weak acids and weak bases. Um, so I just did A for you, basically HNO3 ionizes to form H plus and NO3 minus. The molarity was given, so I kind of wrote the molarity underneath there. And so this one's not too bad. Instead of four pieces of information, they just want the, remember H3O plus is the same thing as H plus, right? Same thing. So basically you already have H3O plus, don't you? You're done right there. And then the other thing that you need to do is come up with a hydroxide ion concentration. So, you know, just recognize that multiplied together, they equal the Kw, which is 1.0 times 10 to the minus 14. Okay, so rearranging it, you can knock out the hydrogen ion concentration. So that's not too bad. And then I have a hint. I circled C 
The thing about C, it's a base, right? Okay, so you're basically producing hydroxide ions. The other thing, though, is remember for every one mole of strontium hydroxide, strontium 2 hydroxide, strontium hydroxide, strontium, it's a um, <laughs> group 2A, so you don't use Roman numerals. For every one mole of this, you get two moles of OH minus. So recognize, you know, if it's 0 0.00213 molar in the salt, it's 0 0.00426 molar in the hydroxide ion. So that's the only catch there. And then for the next problem, kind of similar, they only want you to knock out pH of this. So I, I picked on D. Um, I picked on D on purpose because it's kind of like that strontium hydroxide. D, basically, for every one mole of barium hydroxide, you get two moles of the hydroxide ion. Don't let that come back to kick you in the butt. Okay? So if I'm after pH, then, you know, the hydroxide ion concentration is 2 times 4.8 times 10 to minus 3rd, or 9.2 times 10 to minus 3rd. Yeah, that's okay. Then if I'm after pH, you can go a couple of different ways. Um, I might would go for the hydrogen ion by taking the KW divided by the hydroxide ion concentration. Okay, and once I had the H+, plus, I would go ahead and take negative, uh, negative log of that. That would give me um, the pH. Or... You can get the pOH from this number, okay, you can get the pOH and recognize that the pOH plus, uh, excuse me, 14 minus the pOH is equal to the pH. So those are two different ways. So you have kind of an assortment of acids and basic salts. So, any questions, Matthew? Matthew, are you still there? Yeah, um, the 9.2 shouldn't it be 9.6? Very good. Thank you. I will fix that. Anything else? No. <laughs> good job. Okie dokie. See you on the flip side. Bye, Matthew. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. See you later. Yep. Let me know if I didn't. I think I did. Okay.